on the webcast. Uh, we are TCVSQ, an unusually resonant saxophone quartet. Uh, it's been quite a year and a half for us. We formed almost two years ago. Uh, since then, we have premiered several pieces, including a piece by Percy Granger, which is quite an accomplishment because Percy Granger is dead. <laughs> uh, we performed at several conferences, including the uh, North American Saxophone Alliance Biennial Conference, which was held in Cincinnati this past year. Just to give you a little background about us, um, all the three of us here, and Nick, Wade, and myself, we're all students here at the University of Nebraska at various points in time. Uh, Wade was the first person that I met when I came here for a visit. Uh, we ended up playing in a quartet together briefly that went to the Navy Symposium in DC. And then after that, we never really played in a quartet again. And then years later, uh, we had, knew Nick when he was in high school. Um, and he was quite the character. He's, he's since mellowed quite a bit, thank goodness. Um, and so we met Nick in high school, and then Nick was a student here as an undergrad, and we performed together. Um, and then while Nick was here, and I was finishing a degree, uh, we performed in a quartet with uh, Paul, who was our teacher and our mentor, um, in various iterations. And it all sounded really good, but there was always something missing from that group. And after we had all graduated and moved on, um, we, we talked and said, you know, why? Why don't we start a quartet, the three of us? We hadn't really played together, the three of us before, so why don't we start? And if that's one thing I could impart to the students who are in the audience, now don't wait for your teachers to tell you, to give you permission to do things, just go ahead and do them. Um, and I'm sure he will um, <laughs> back in your mind. So uh, we're like, well, who are we gonna get for a fourth person? Um, and we threw around a couple names, and, and then we said, well, what if we could get Paul? And so uh, we ambushed him. We took him to Honest Aids, and we got his belly full of a very good hamburger, and then we sprung it on him that we wanted to start a quartet. And our sort of cherry on top was that this saxophone studio motto here at UNL is TCB, which means do your job. That's as much as I'm going to say about it. Um, but we decided we were going to be TCBSQ, because um, for those of us who are doing our jobs, we have been quite successful. And uh, those of us we know who haven't been doing our jobs have not been. So uh, luckily he agreed. Uh, it's been a really fantastic experience. Um, studying with him has been one of the highlights of my life and I'm sure the other guys. And now we are colleagues together in this group playing some really incredible music and it's been a blast. So we're going to continue and kind of let the music speak for itself. I'll try not to talk too much but I won't make any promises there as I do love the sound of my own. So, uh, moving on, we're going to play another piece uh, by uh, Isaac Albanus. Um, this is uh, Trois Pieces. 
which is three pieces.
Thank you very much. This next piece by Florenzo, Sudamerica, uh, has been a, a source of lots of humor for our group. Uh, the, the first movement, some of you might find, resembles a certain video gaming system. How many of you have played a Wii before? Awesome. Have you guys ever made a little Wii character? You guys know the theme song from the Wii? Yeah. See if you don't hear that in the first movement. The second movement, how many of you have played a Game Boy? Like the original Game Boy. How many of you have played Tetris? See if you don't hear something that resembles the Tetris theme in the second movement. And finally, the fourth movement. Huh? What about the third movement? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> this is why we don't let Nick talk. <laughs> the fourth movement doesn't have anything to do with video games, but uh, there's a certain song about alcoholic beverages uh, that, that, uh, that, that it does kind of resemble. Uh, a very certain one that you would take a shot of. I'm going to leave it at that. This is Sudamerica. <laughs> this is why they let me rarely talk. <laughs>
Thank you.
Did everyone figure out the song was tequila? Some of you are way too young to be nodding your head. <laughs> uh, next we're going to do Sweet Helene. We're moving a little bit away from South America, as in across the ocean, to Greece. Um, Sweet Helene is written by Pedro Iturralde, who I believe is an Argentinian composer, so we have a little bit of cross-pollination going on here. Um, there are four moments of this, a really interesting piece. Um, I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I, I'm, I'm stumbling a little because we haven't even got to the difficult parts yet. <laughs> so I'm anticipating what's ahead, but I don't, wanna, I don't wanna give away the ghost too soon. So, Sweet Helene. Thank you. 
This next piece, I'm not even going to try to butcher that composer's name. Not even going to try. First name is John Franklin. But I won't try the last name. Almost Tango. Oh, we have not figured out why this is. Oh, what? Did I miss something? No, no. Oh, OK. You look at me like I missed it. OK. <laughs> Almost Tango. We have not figured out why this is not actually a tango. Why it is only almost a tango. Uh, so we're going to let you decide why it is almost a tango. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. <laughs>
piece is called Danza El Que Bio Con El Diablo, which translates to He Who Dances With the Devil. And this is one of the most unique quartets I think I've ever had the experience of playing. Uh, there was a lot of debate this summer over whether or not we were going to do it. And sometimes you come across a piece that, even though you know it's going to take a toll on you, uh, on your time, on your energy, uh, that it's worth the effort. And this is definitely one of those pieces. Uh, we did this, uh, we played at Hastings, um, where I teach, last Thursday, and it was very well received, and I think um, to the shock of those students. Um, so this is Danza El Que Bio Con El Diablo by Rod Moles, and uh, that's all I'm going to say. Enjoy.
This has really uh, been a pleasure, uh, and where I greatly appreciate these gentlemen uh, and their compliments about being students, I, I want to tell you that one of the best things that you can have as a teacher is that moment where you no longer call your students students, even former students, these are my colleagues. And um, what's really wonderful about it is they constant, there's already a thing in the saxophone world where you have to try to play faster than the next person and you try to find hard music. But when one of them is like half your age, <laughs> and you're a male, there's kind of, sure, I'll play that piece, and then stuff starts to purge. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we are inspired by our teachers, and, and this we're going to play one more piece that's not on the program for you. It is the third movement of what is considered, uh, at least for me, my all-time favorite piece of music. If I have to take this on a desert island, it's this piece of music. And it is a quartet by Aldemero Romero that I was first introduced to when I was a young man and I heard a quartet called the Harvey Patel Saxophone Quartet for the very first time. Um, it is arguably, the whole quartet uh, is arguably one of the most colorful and beautiful pieces that I've ever heard. And um, I think the thing I love about it most is I just even say the Romero Quartet and I start getting goosebumps. So I hope if you're a musician, you have that piece of music or that person that you can think about. And if you don't, well, now you know what to, to strive for. So this is the uh, third movement called the Choro and Tango from Aldemero Romero's Quartet for Saxophones. Again, thank you for coming out. <laughs> 